your views right now on the, the overall market trend that we're seeing. Could you just recap what took place last week? Because it seems like this negative momentum has started to, to slip into the markets. All the euphoria about the earnings that we saw coming through appear to have, have dissipated. And it seems that the market very much still focused on what's taking place globally right now. Um, absolutely. What, what we're seeing in the market, obviously, is... Is a, yeah, I'd, I'd probably describe it more of a, more of a pullback um, rather than a sell-off of the market. Um, we've seen a pretty strong April and May. Um, market was up about eight, between 8 and 9% at some point during, the, during that period. And what investors are basically doing is just um, probably booking in some of the profits that they've made during that period um, and preparing themselves for the rest of the year. Um, you spoke earlier on about the trend for GDP and perhaps the movement that we might expect from the NPC tomorrow. Um, the reality is that investors have their eyes on those two um, key variables, as well as probably um, to, sub, to, to a lesser extent um, the underlying direction of the Naira going forward. Um, but I think that if you look at the fundamentals of the market, um, we've seen a strong recovery from the banks, which from um, a, a significant portion of the industry, of, of the stock market. And we've also seen very good performance um, from the FMCGs, um, the breweries. I think that underlying fundamentals of the market still remains quite strong. Um, but a lot of that is going to be dependent on how we're able to manage those key macroeconomic variables going forward. Yeah, and we're talking about the telecom sector being the fastest growing sector last year, only still 5% of GDP, but it is significant right now, very much in the news headlines. We know there's a new bill that's being passed to, to look at forcing multinationals to list on the exchange. I mean, at this point in time, if you speak to the likes of uh, Safisa Debengwe, who's the CEO of MTN, saying that they don't want to be in a position where they're forced to list on a market that is not very liquid right now, What's the likelihood, or relatively liquid compared to the likes of South African global markets, what's the likelihood of this bill being passed? Look, the bill could and should and may be passed. You know, the truth for me is it's, it's quite unusual that you actually force corporates um, to approach a market. The market is supposed to be a free market. Um, and, I, and I think that I've publicly been one of the few people against that move to force people to just list. Um, especially, and as you've rightly said, um, volumes are extremely thin. Um, the companies you, that have seen very strong volumes um, are usually the, almost like the penny type stocks. Um, and and you, you need more significant reforms to take place before you start to compel people you know, to, to, to list on the market. I think that what the government needs to do is to be a bit more strategic in their thinking on how to deepen and widen the breadth of the market. Yeah. Um, and and that, that strategy thinking has to come from, you know, improved corporate governance, even of the market itself, um, improved transparency in terms of pricing. You've got to remove the 5% limits, um, the, the daily limits on the market. You know, those, those little, I, I, they're not even little, they're important for you to be able to create the confidence that's required um, for those, those type of companies to list. And then you've also got to increase the, the ability to actually raise capital from the market. It's been perhaps one of the softest five years that I've seen since I started my career on this market, where we haven't really had any IPOs, you know, any new issues in the last three, four years. Very little of those. So wh what exactly is the compelling reason for these guys to be listening at this yeah. point in time? I really can't see it. Yeah, Femi, that is something that uh, Debengwa did point out. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but it's always good to have you on the show, Femi Oladien, Senior Vice President from Argentile Capital Partners.